So for this video I decided to head to an area local to me known as Ness Glen. The purpose of the video is to create panoramic images and I thought using the moving water would add and help to the effect of the panorama as well because as you can see by the images the river runs right down through this small gorge in Ness Glen. So I was looking for an area in Ness Glen that would lend itself to this type of edit and I found one that I think works, there are plenty more but I thought for the purposes of this video this one would suit fine. I'm also going to analyse the shot that I took and just give you my opinion on the image once I've edited it because there are a few things after looking back in the image that I wasn't just too keen on. So hopefully You'll get something from the video and hopefully you enjoy seeing this area known as Ness Glen. Okay, these are the eight images that I'm going to use and what I'll do is I'll cycle through them so that you can see how much overlap there is in the images. And as you can see for a couple of them, I've actually shot it twice. Whether that's been just a focusing issue or whether I've just decided I wanted that tiny bit more in the image. The actual process of stitching these together in Lightroom is really really quick and this is how we do it. From the first image here to the end image select them all I held down shift there and then go up into photo, photo merge, panorama and from here let Lightroom do its thing. For me, I leave it spherical because I find that gives you the best results for these images. And so there you go. So you notice up the top here, we have all these areas that it's missed when it's trying to blend them all together. So what I normally do is I take on boundary warp, the auto crop and the auto settings I don't use and I don't use fill edges. I find that boundary warp gives me the best results and basically take that up to 100% and there we have it. Next thing I do is click Merge. Okay, so this is the resulting image and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this and edit it before I take it into Luminar AI. I'm actually going to miss out the Photoshop side just now and just take it directly into Luminar AI. So the first thing for me is I'm going to crop the image and I've got the crop unlocked. The aspect ratio I originally intended was 16 by 9 and if I take it to 16 by 9 I don't lose much of the image and I don't want that. I want the feeling of a longer image to suit the composition. And also because of this area up here, the sun was just, by the time I got there, the sun was just too bright and I couldn't even exposure blend it to get it to where I wanted. So I just took the shot anyway. So I'm now going to unlock this and I'm going to take this out all the way out and all the way down here. But at the same time, I do want to include some of this because of what I'm going to do with the image. So that there for me, I'm quite happy with. I'll maybe bring it down slightly to around there. Yep, I'll go with that, double click in there. So that's the image I have just now. I'm now going to go in and edit this. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull back the highlights slightly, push the shadows to around about there. That just seems a nice area for that. A slight dehaze uh, texture. I am not going to touch because I'm going to use that in Luminar AI when I use Enhance AI. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the greens in here. So I'm going to take the greens back slightly just to make them slightly more vibrant to around about there. That looks okay with that. The other thing for me, the water now is too blue, so I'm going to go into the colour and I'm going to go into the blue and I'm going to pull the saturation out of the water just ever so slightly, not too much at all, to around about there. So that's us again got the base for the edit. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with this image and I'm just going to create something that I want to see with it. So I'm going to go in to the radio filter. I'm going to put a radio filter in here. We've got light coming in here anyway, so I'm just going to enhance that light. Just to around about there, right? 
and I'm going to take off the dehaze, leave fine adjustment on, take down the highlights, but what I'm going to do is push the exposure slightly and then warm it up slightly as well to around about there. If I hold down Alt on the keyboard, I can just pull it down at the bottom there and that will give me that. Let's move it across. So I quite like what's happening here. I quite like the light. We're just working with what we've got. We're not adding anything that isn't there. We may do that in Luminary AI though. So I've just enhanced that slightly. I'm still unsure if I want this area in because I feel as if I've been drawn to it. But I'm going to warm it up a tiny bit more, not too much, just to about there. Go back into the crop now and I'll take it down just to see what I think about it like that. Right, that's working better for me. If I go back into the radio filter, I can then push the exposure a tiny bit more. Because what we've got is we've got the dark leading in up here and that leading back out. So, from here, quite happy, I'm going to jump into Luminar AI. So it's right click, edit in, Luminar AI. Okay, now that we're in Luminar AI, what I'm going to do is just edit this very slightly. So I'm going to go into Edit and I'm going to push AI and Enhance AI. Just a tiny bit. So if I go for the before, after, before and after, you can see the slight difference here. I'm then going to go into the structure and do the same with the structure. So let's go before, after, before and after. Let's just check it this way as well. And I quite like that final effect there. Yes, I'm quite happy with that. Right, just to finish this image off, what I'm going to do is I am going to go in to the creative and I'm going to get into atmosphere, but I'm going to use the atmosphere in a different way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add fog to this image and I'm just going to add about that much fog to it. Depth wise, I don't need to come down the image because I'm only focusing on this area here. I'm using the fog to enhance this because of the light and that is all I'm doing. I'm not adding fog to it, I'm just adding the effect. So it won't actually look like a fog once you see it. So quite happy with that. I may take the lightness back slightly so that we still have some of that colour coming through. Then I am going to go in and I'm just going to paint it into the areas that I want it. I'm going to leave the opacity at 50%. So I'm just going to paint it in there. And up round there. And perhaps take the brush size down. I'm not going to paint in between the branches. I'm just going to paint in that area there, perhaps in there. Right, so let's turn that off and then go for a before and after, before and after. Unsure, but let's just stick with it for now. I then will again go in and paint again. And as you saw, my opacity is at 50%. I'm now painting another 50% in. So this is going to increase the depth of the perceived fog within this. But I'm using it more as a light and a hazed, misty light. Now, another thing I could have done for that is I could have went in and used Enhance AI or Structure AI and pulled the amount back the way to give that effect. So you can use one or the other. I just thought I would use fog since it was there. So it depends what effect you want with this. So let's get back in here, back into the atmosphere. Again, like the way things are going so far. So let's go in to mystical. And let's add some mystical into this as well. Very, very slight. And I'm going to leave it at that. If I turn that off and put it back on, I like the effect. I don't think I'm going to add any Autumn effect to this, but I'll just put it in just to see. So I'm going to go and go into Autumn effect. Right, let's add some of this in just to see what it does. Yep, I like the effect. Now click Apply. Now that we've used Luminary AI as a plugin, that's us back in Lightroom, right? I want to increase this again just subtly, 
because we added the fog and it took some of the warmth away from it, which it would do, but I want to add it back in, but it's provided me the effect I wanted for that area. Now I could have done everything that I did up here in a light room and I could have just pulled the sharpness and the structure back in here to create that effect but I wanted to see what the fog was like and how that could use that within a luminary I just to be using the plug in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the warmth here yet again so I'm just going to put a radial filter in there drag it down slightly holding down ALT and then I'm going to increase the warmth. Right, I could do this like that, and again, that's too much, plus it affects too much round about. So what I'm going to do is take it back to zero, I just in very, very slightly, just about there. Right, I'm happy with that, but I don't want it affecting these too much. So what I'm going to do is go into the brush, go into erase, Press zero on my keyboard and I can see the mask that the radio filter has created and I'm going to paint it out of these areas here but first of all I'm going to take the flow up full. So I'm painting it out of these areas here and also that area there. I want it just to creep round but not too much. And we'll take it out of that area there take the brush down, take it off the trees. Now I have to be careful here because it could show up too much on the trees there. So what I'll do is I'll press zero in the keyboard. No, it's worked okay. And then I will take the flow down slightly, increase the brush and just paint in there because we don't want this dominating the entire image. And I press zero on the keyboard and that removes the mask. Right, I'm quite happy with that. Let's just see if I push this even further. That's a nicer one. So that's went up quite a bit with the temperature there. And again, I'm quite happy with that. The rest of the image, I could now go in and dodge and burn. And I'll pick out certain areas in this and I'll actually dodge and burn it in Photoshop now. On reflection, I do like the image and I do like the edit because we have the lines that lead you in towards the light at the top and then the light complementing and bringing you back down the river. We also have the current that's taking you back down the river as well, but my main complaint about the image for me is this area here. This is when I didn't take time. I feel that if I had actually caught some more of the banking in this image and the path just at the side it would have helped frame it even better so that's my main kind of thoughts about this image however though the next time I shoot it I will make sure that I get more of the river bank in to frame the water hopefully you got something from that and hopefully you did because that's the last video of 2020 I'd just like to say thank you very much for the last couple of years uh, with all the comments, the likes, the subscribers. I really appreciate it because the channel's grown into something that I didn't expect and something that I really enjoy doing and that I'm going to take forward into 2021. Speaking of 2021, I hope that provides some positivity for you. The world is going to be a different place, but hopefully everything for you moving into 2021 and beyond is positive. Remember, stay safe, thanks again for watching and all the best for new year. I'll see you in the next video.